Hello everyone! Today, in Cleaning Leader Box, Dr. Fluffy brings you an SRW that doesn't understand free speech and it's kind of pro censorship. Let's take a look. Hey guys, so today I thought I would discuss censorship. Ooh, big topic. It's been everywhere recently, from PewDiePie to the LGBT things to Milo and to my personal life where I will, on occasion, block a lad. Well, you personally blocking someone and the things that are happening to PewDiePie and Milo Kind of a big stretch to compare both, but let's see where you go with this. Truthfully, I don't really block as many people anymore, but why not? Why not? Sometimes you just want to. The thing is, this feels like the most obvious video I've ever had to make, but somehow people just aren't getting it. So here we are. Or maybe people don't share your opinion and think that you're wrong. But, but let's give you a chance, let's see what you have to say. Let's start with PewDiePie and Milo. I'm not trying to paint them with the same brush because, nope, different people, different situations. But their situations do have things in common, so we'll discuss that. PewDiePie made some anti-Semitic jokes which I just don't like as a sentence in 2017, that's just me. Yes, that's probably just you because people, different people have different senses of humor and just because something is not funny to you doesn't mean it's not funny to someone else. So no, people shouldn't be getting in trouble because of jokes. And Milo has been uh, consistently awful for a very long time. How? Because he disproves and debunks the myths that you people hold so dear? Because Milo, as far as I can tell, is a pretty nice guy. Never seen him do anything awful. He's, sometimes he's a bit rude, but overall, I don't see where the whole the awfulness comes from. A lot of people are saying that them being denied book deals and TV shows and public speaking positions is an attack on free speech, which Spoiler, it isn't. Actually it is when it's outside people that are influencing everybody else to do that. Example, Berkeley, where there was a riot and they stopped him from speaking with violence. That's censorship. For example, they did a fallacious and slanderous hit piece on him to get his book deal cancelled. That's censorship. The thing about free speech is that it's actually just about what you can say. But also on that note, in a lot of countries, free speech actually excludes hate speech. But we're not going to get into that. Yes, it's a complicated thing because who determines what hate speech is? Nobody seems to agree. Especially when people seem to have agreed what hate speech was. And suddenly feminists start creating hate speech for anything. Like any criticism you have of feminism and feminists suddenly is hate speech. Of course, this doesn't make sense. That's why you cannot censor even hate speech. Because especially in, in modern days, anything you don't like, you say it's hate speech. Free speech protects your right to say what you want, but it doesn't entitle you to be able to speak at a university or have your own TV show. Actually it is, because the university and the TV station are not obliged to give you a platform. But if they are giving you a platform and people from on the outside come and try to stop the TV station or the university to give you a platform, that's an, a violation of free speech, that's censorship. Again, you wouldn't like it if it happened to you. Then you would cry, oh, they're censoring me. Free speech doesn't entitle you to be paid to say certain things, it just means that you won't get arrested for saying them. Who is talking about money? I don't understand why you brought up money, because, again, if the company wants to give money to someone, they have the right to. But that doesn't, has nothing to do with other people stopping that company to give money to that person. That's censorship. For example, right now, I could say Trump is a bit of a dick. If that statement caused me to face legal ramifications, then yes, that is an attack on free speech. But if Trump University or any university or any place doesn't want to pay me to say that, that's fine. That's not an attack on free speech. But if they asked you to go there and they were willing to pay you and suddenly a mob of protesters started protesting you going there to speak and started rioting and stopping you from speaking there, that's a violation of free speech, that's censorship. Again, it's not the company, it's the people doing the censorship. Do you understand the difference? Disney and Maker Studios dropping PewDiePie doesn't mean that they're against free speech, it just means that they don't want to be actively supporting somebody who says things that don't align with their views. Yes, and nobody is accusing Disney of censorship, they're accusing Wall Street Journal and all the media publications of censorship because they did a slanderous piece full of lies and misrepresentation, gave it to Disney to get PewDiePie fired and to censor PewDiePie. Do you understand the difference? The censors in this case are the media, not Disney. Disney were just cowards, they should have stood their ground and didn't. They didn't protect their employer and they caved in 
to the censors. And that's fine. Say what you want, but if you make jokes about anti-Semitism, there might be some backlash. So should there be a backlash for media publications that do a slanderous, dishonest campaign against a YouTuber? Correct? Next up is blocking someone or even gasp reporting a video censorship. Again, nope, it isn't. Blocking someone, it isn't censorship because it's you that stops interacting with the person and you have the right to stop interacting with whatever you want. But reporting a video, that's censorship. My first brush with being accused of censorship was when I blocked somebody who was sending his audience after me. Baby's first hate video. Despite getting my fair share of hate online because I was going through a very, very angry feminist stage, I actually hadn't blocked anyone before then. I remember when I blocked him, I was accused of censorship and truthfully, I actually thought at the time that blocking him would block anybody who was mentioning his name because I didn't want to see any of the things that his audience was sending me. I can't imagine that that's not an exaggeration at all. But let's pretend I believe you. Yes, blocking someone is not censorship. And uh, I'm sorry, but if you put your videos on the internet, everybody has the right to comment and they have the right to interact with your video. I actually have the opinion that YouTube should not let videos that have their ratings disabled and comment section um, deleted to be able to monetize those videos. Because I do believe that if you put the video online in public, and you want to monetize it, yeah, the video should be able to be rated and be able to be commented on. Oh no, she lives in an echo chamber. No, she just doesn't want death threats every half hour. Everybody gets hate on the internet. Everybody gets death threats. And I'm sorry, I don't believe you got so many death threats. You're probably just exaggerating for victim points. The reason I blocked him is because I was going through a lot of the time and I had to deal with some certain things in my personal life. And so I was like, I'll block him now and then unblock him later when I have the time and like emotional capacity to deal with this. Is that a crime? No. Is it censorship? Also no. Again, while well, your story is probably completely exaggerated for your victim point's purpose, I agree. Blocking someone is not censorship because the person still can interact with the audience and he still can respond to you. True video. Because it boils down to the fact that not wanting to hear what somebody has to say isn't the same thing as censoring them. Yes, yeah, censoring them would be, for example, reporting the video so nobody else can hear what that person has to say. That's censorship. Say what you want. It doesn't mean that everybody has to listen. Especially because a lot of the time it isn't constructive criticism. It's just mindless hatred. At least that's been my experience. That's been your perceived experience. Because if something the feminists love is to take valid criticism and constructive criticism and say it's just hate. Additionally, is reporting a video censorship? And what if that video is taken down? When I had my experience with a channel much larger than me making a video about me, I tried to get it taken down. Oh, shock, horror. That's because I was receiving multiple death threats and rape threats every single day. I'm sorry, but the size of the channel will not change the fact that you're trying to censor that person. Yes, when you're trying to take the video down, you're trying to silence that person's voice, you're being a censor. You were the one that decided to expose your opinions online. So there, if somebody responds to you, your response cannot be to try to censor them. It was your choice to put your opinions out there. So now you have to deal with it. You have to deal with the criticism. Probably every single hour. My mental health then, back then wasn't really great and I was borderline suicidal before all that happened. So I just didn't want to hear how people wanted to kill me. I'm sorry, but that doesn't justify you censoring another person. That person has no fault that you have mental problems. Get out of the internet if that's how you feel. People were going to extreme lengths to find my address so that they could hurt me, including paying my friends to hand over my address. Sidebar, shout out to the friends who took the money and then gave them the wrong address. I feel that's just a made up story, but whatever, you know, report those people to the police. It has nothing to do with the YouTuber in case. He has no control of what other people on the internet do. He did a video criticizing you, he has a right to. But it was a lot to handle and some of the hate was coming from his Twitter account but the majority of the stuff that I was getting was stemming from this one video. So yeah, I tried to get it taken down, call me an attacker of free speech. But do you know what happened? Nothing. That video is still up there today. Because YouTube didn't consider it bad enough to remove even though they did agree that the backlash was absolutely insane. It well, YouTube was right not to remove the video. And did you ever imagine that the backlash probably resulted because what you said and your ideas that you exposed were really bad and probably made people angry. It was nothing to do with that particular YouTuber video. That YouTuber video just exposed you. If it 
the video does get removed, it isn't the case of one person just calling up YouTube being like, hey lads, mind removing this vid? There are checks and balances, and they're actually very tricky to get past. If a video is removed, or a Twitter account suspended, or a Facebook page is banned, it isn't the fault of anybody apart from the person who created that content, because they are the ones that didn't abide by the website's terms and services. Actually, it's not that simple. A lot of times, a lot of these platforms have bias intent, and a lot of people start mass flagging things to censor, and sometimes those platforms just cave in, even though sometimes the videos do not uh, violate anything. And for example, a lot of times, false copyright claims, false flagging, there's a lot of that in YouTube. It's not that simple. This kind of comes back to my first point of just because you have something to say doesn't mean that people have to pay you to say it, and it doesn't mean that a certain platform has to host it. As Again with the money, uh, I'm sorry, but if you do a video, the video is completely compliant with the law, with terms of service, and people start violating actually the law in terms of service, slandering somebody and trying to falsely accuse somebody of something to remove their video or stop a speech, that's a violation of freedom of speech. Because those people are censoring that person. Aside, constantly attacking someone and starting up an entire movement to shut them up it seems to me a lot more like censorship than blocking someone on Twitter. Oh my god, the irony. Do you understand that's what you people do? What feminists do? What, for example, people did to PewDiePie? They got him up together of journalists, made a fake story about him, slandering him to the public and to his, this company to get him fired. Milo was going to talk with in Berkeley, people... Mm, got together a mob, they rioted, they did violent shit until the people that invited him had to quit and to stop the talk. That's censorship. Those people lost the platform. Now, PewDiePie didn't really lose the platform. In terms, they tried, but he didn't lose the platform. He still has a platform. He just lost the backup of his company. Still, the slander cost him you, on the other hand, somebody did a video exposing your ideas or responding. I have no idea what the video was about, but responding to you because they didn't agree with you and you had the platform to respond back. Everybody that went from his platform to your platform to criticize you, they were also expressing your opinion on the internet. You still have the platform to answer back. Nobody did a mob, nobody did a conspiracy against you. Nobody censored you. You had the same platform that he did to answer back. I knew I couldn't ignore that. And finally, the LGBT restricted mode situation thing. But is restricting LGBT videos in restricted mode censorship? No. Well, we finally agree on something. No, it isn't because the restrictive mode is optional and it's a mode to stop kids from watching adult content. So it makes sense feeds into the idea that being queer is inherently wrong and unsafe for children, which, in my opinion, isn't true. No, it plays in the concept that uh, children have not matured yet, have not gone to, into pu puberty, so they don't understand sexuality, much less they will not understand a minority of different sexualities. Sexuality itself is already complex, too complex for them. It feeds into a much wider discussion that I won't bother getting into in this video, but at the end of the day, it is YouTube's decision. I don't think it's the right decision. And you have the right to think that. And nobody's censoring you. The takeaway of this video is that you don't understand actually free speech. Because free speech entails that you, people have the right to speak and people have the right to listen to others speak. If you stop someone from speaking and from other people to listen to that person speak, you are being a censor. You are censoring those persons. Because in a free speech society, you debate ideas, you answer back. If you have the power to answer back, you, that's what you do. You don't censor. You don't stop that person from speaking. That's what people try to do to Milo. That's what people try to do with, with PewDiePie. That's what you tried to do by trying to remove that video. The person that did a video about you did not try to censor you. Because he gave you the same opportunity of debating as everybody else. You had a platform to speak back to him, he did not try to take your video down. So, I, there's my rambling thoughts about free speech and about this video in particular. I, I wouldn't say against free speech, but misunderstanding free speech. 
Please give me your opinions down below. If you like this video, leave a like, share it if you can, subscribe if you haven't, follow me on Twitter because you always get my videos first from there. And in the end of the day, stay fluffy!